begin this hour with our 13 Investigate special report, a critical call. Who responds to a mental health crisis? Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Elaine Houston and I'm Rachel TD. If you've never been impacted by mental illness, you might be surprised by that answer. Often it's law enforcement and depending on the level of training and experience, the outcome can be disastrous. Over the next few nights, we will share the story of a Saratoga County woman and show you the shocking video of her ordeal. We'll also look at the bigger issue of the challenge that officers and deputies face in dealing with mental health crisis. 13 Investigates' Tessa Bentulin is here now to shed some light on this complex topic. Elaine, Rachel, Charlene Hunter admits she struggled with mental health issues through much of her life. She's a survivor of sexual abuse and deals with PTSD. It came to a head last fall with a disturbing encounter involving Stillwater Police. It's tough to watch, but it's real. And Charlene says it's proof the system needs to change. This is Charlene Hunter today. I am a mom, um, I have two wonderful children, um, um, I love going to church. And this was Charlene Hunter one year ago. They're taking me witches! They got the cuffs on! They got the cuffs on Stop witches! Stop they fighting. got the cuffs on witches! Diagnosed with bipolar and struggling to find the right medication, Charlene was in and out of the hospital repeatedly. Hallucinations, paranoia, and violent outbursts brought Stillwater police to her apartment with involuntary transport orders a number of times, including this day. We will, if I show you the copy, you're going to be cool with us? We'll just walk no. down and go? Nope. Okay. I am not walking out that door with okay. the police officer right there. I'll go get the order. You want to say no, out he's for a not staying in this house with me. Do not leave me in this house with this man. In Charlene's delusional state, even seeing the hospital order wasn't enough. She still refused to comply. And while her husband waited downstairs, things took an ugly turn. He's got the taser. He's got hearing the voices, I believed I was a witch, you know, and that was scary in itself. Um, and I, I remember the officer coming and, and them grabbing me, and there I just go flaring because I'm so, so afraid. All I could hear was screaming, yelling, begging, pleading. Um, and you're talking from a second floor apartment all the way to the front, almost the next door. Um, I just assume that maybe she's just re overreacting. My hope, my, I mean, what else do you think? My hope was that she's just screaming and yelling, not getting hurt. Charlene doesn't remember a lot of what happened from here, including the officers and EMS carrying her head first, hands and feet restrained down the narrow staircase of her second floor apartment and leaving her on the sidewalk. Charlene's husband does remember the frightening episode and says these officers seemed focused on a quick resolution at any cost. When it's not something that is an imminent danger, like somebody on a bridge or somebody standing on a ledge, there is time. They have all the time in the world. They get paid to spend their time helping us. And if they're not willing to spend their time helping us and they're in a rush, is not a good enough excuse for me to, to do their job improperly and to hurt somebody and to make matters worse. Despite all she's been through, Charlene says she is stronger and healthier than ever. She now has several open investigations involving Stillwater Police, the Saratoga County Sheriff's Department, and she's even filed a complaint with the Attorney General's office. But she also has a message for the Stillwater Police officers who responded that day. 
I am sorry. You know, I'm sorry that happened and I'm sorry I acted that way. Just me as a person, I'm, I'm sorry, you know? I, but I, I was not in the wrong. You know, I, I was very vulnerable. I was not myself and I had no clue which way was what at, at that time. We did reach out to the Stillwater police chief for an interview, and while he initially agreed, we have not yet heard back from him since then. Meanwhile, Charlene and her husband both say what happened to her is proof the system is broken and she would like to help fix it. Tomorrow, we will hear more about that. We'll also look at some of the programs around the country and right here in the capital region that aim to change the way people experiencing a mental health crisis are treated. Elaine and Rachel.